There we go. All right. <clears throat> okay. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. So. That's actually a true story, by the way. Trailers. I want to talk about trailers. Eve online trailers, specifically, of course. So, Eve has been around for a hell of a long time now, 19 years, and there have been a ton of trailers made along the way. Here's a bunch of them, in no particular order. So, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of old ones here, uh, the newer widescreen ones at the top. I was expecting this image actually to be a lot more colorful, but these are the end plates of the trailers, and a lot of them just end on a black screen. But uh, there are about 50 of them here, and there's plenty more that we've made over the past. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we go about making these things and, and how the process has evolved and changed over time as new techniques and features have been developed and workflows have been uh, you know, refined and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so before I get into that, I should introduce myself a little bit. I'm CCP Zond3, Cinematic Lead, and my Eve slash CCP journey began all the way back in two, 2003. So here's a picture of the front cover of the box that uh, I bought back then. I thought I was being original, uh, but everybody seems to be using this image in their presentations. <laughs> uh, so I started playing in 2003, and I was just a Care Bear miner, but then I started noticing that there was a community of uh, people that were making videos of all sorts of stuff, um, <clears throat> capturing in-game footage and making cool music right, videos this is like or 2006 when documenting really wars and conflicts that were going on at the time. So I wanted, well, I wanted to get in on that action. So after many failed attempts, I made a, like a recruitment ad for a corp that I was in at the time, M Corp, and released it to the community, and shortly after, CCP got in touch and said, come to Iceland for two weeks, join us in the Reykjavik studio, and help us make the, ex uh, the, the Exodus expansion trailer. So my, uh, my imposter syndrome levels went right through the roof. You know, these guys have no idea that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, but I went along anyway, and uh, it, was, it was pretty good. Uh, I spent a lot of the framework of the trailer was already set in stone. CCP Real X, the musician back then, he had recorded a track, and so the length of the trailer was already determined. And the voiceover had been recorded. It was the original, um, original Aura voice. So they just plonked me in front of a computer, and I was frapsing footage of Frats. anything back then. The tools Woo! were very minimal. It was very hit and miss, a lot of trial Lesson and error involved. There. Uh, <clears throat> just basic camera controls that were in the game, and a few slash commands that you could type into the, into the chat window. Uh, yep, including in the, in the, um, the ability to create formations of ships and healing entities to zero, effectively exploding them, which is very useful. So, and that's the, that's the first video I'd like to play for you all. It's like, a, it's like the baseline for you know, the rest of the videos to come. Just as an interesting side note, this image here is a, uh, is a screen grab from, from uh, a gameplay screen grab from a trailer that we did last year. And this is 4K. And the next image will be a... I was about to say, that's not old. Hello, who are you? <laughs> that's a drifter thing. And the next image will be a screen, a screen grab from the trailer that you're about to watch. Look at that. So that's, that's huh. 640 by 480. So apologies, apologies in advance for how this might look on this huge screen. It I ran into this bad. problem trying but, um, to use older footage and let's, let's play my, Exodus uh, videos. An old prophecy foretold of magnificent cities in the skies. It told of riches beyond dreams in uncharted heavens. A better place. A new home. A promised land. It 
greatest hour of time. The new empires are rising. The exodus has begun. So there might, be, there might be some nostalgia vibes going on. I don't know. It's quite probable that there are people playing the game today that weren't even born when, when that trailer was released. <laughs> Oof. Okay, so, yeah, so after Exodus, uh, CCP was very kind enough to finance a new machine for oh. me to carry on making videos at home. So I had this grand idea for a for a video, an e-video, that would encompass everything that EVE Online had to offer. I wanted to chuck everything at it. Just highlight the ships, the different races, um, chuck in some UI shots in all their glory, different types of gameplay. And glory. This video eventually took about six months to make. It was a real labor of love. Uh, CCP got in touch about two months into me making it and you know, asked, you know, started asking questions. You know, what are you up to? Anything good? Can we have a look at what, you, what you're doing? So I was only about a minute into the video and they really liked it. You know, and they just wanted it next week. You know, Can you finish this next week? We need it for a conference. But uh, they had to wait another four months. But um, eventually <clears throat> they released it as an official CCP trailer and they called it Eve Never Fades. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a real... It means a lot to me, this one, because uh, you know, I poured everything into it, and it's the, it's the one I'd like to play next. Uh, the, the tools available were the same as for Exodus, just basic camera controls, so there was a lot of trial and error getting a cool shot that edited well to the next one. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to play that one next. Thank you. I'll get out of the way. I think you're off by about a decade now, so. Oh yeah, this is good. Day of Darkness. Right? Or is that the Glint Day? I think that's Day of Darkness. Look at all the polygons, there's like 10 of them. Dozens. This is just a reminder that like, EVE Online is so cool, all you have to do is just literally just show people it. And they go, oh, that's cool. Like, people have to learn that EVE is boring and you know, all that sort of stuff. They come in just being like, oh my god, space is so pretty. So here's 07. For that prime sub gaming. That's like it. <laughs> It's true, though. Never had a, has a badger look more badass. Old school scorpion.
successful here in person I can't remember. Jamil, this is still pretty Jamil, right? Yeah. How much? This does make me want to watch Clear Skies. No joke. Eat plastic would be terrible. Oh, there it is. There you go. Old UI. Square locked targets. Uh, very blocky overview. Uh, the HUD is somehow the same. And colored buttons. Oh, and boxes are, uh, for rats and pluses for rats. Sorry. Bring back the Pleasure Hub. That actually looks really cool. Crazy how much beauty that we take for granted in this goddamn game. We just think, oh, mission. Oh, hold up. Someone take me back to the Does anybody know what that is? Does anybody know what that is right there? That's the Lapitan Titan. That's right. Nope, it's not an Erebus. It's so much bigger than an Erebus. The Erebus is the is the toned down version of that. It's the original Titan. Thank you. Is anybody around? Yeah, it mostly causes tides then? when you just have them in. All right, cool, cool. It only causes <laughs> problems when you doomsday a planet with a Titan yeah. now. So basically, the story is, is that in the, in the beginning, the factions created the Lapitan Titans. Um, and they're the, you know, they had basically one just Titan for each one, and they were huge to the point where uh, if they were too close to a planet, it would cause tidal shifts on the planet. And so there had to be like big restrictions on where they could go and all that stuff. And yeah, the Serpentis stole the Galentes one at some point. But uh, ultimately, they, they're, they are in the game. Um, as in they're in the universe, but I don't, I don't even think the models are in the, in the, the they don't have models in the files anymore. But the idea is, is that the Titans that we have now are kind of like the toned down, uh, like approved for public consumption version. 
Yeah, we could talk about that at the round table. I'm interested to hear more about oh, that. Oh, the MR has numerous? Okay. But, uh, yeah, so CCP offered me a job after that. So I started uh, as a CCP employee with a dev shirt in uh, January 2006. Yeah, well, I mean, and, that was a model from the game. Yeah, and slowly tools began to be developed to support right. trailer making without having to rely right, solely fine. on capturing cool. in-game footage. <clears throat> so... By 2007, we had a pipeline where we could uh, yes, render shots using, using an in-house tool that CCP developed called Jessica. I remember Jessica. And it's a, it's a 3D tool that lets artists and engineers uh, author and debug assets. It probably is. But also, it enables me to, to translate well. ships and have complete control over everything in a scene is a simple example of that. So uh, Jessica you know, was the difference planets, between Clear Skies 1 and nebula, 2 and Clear Skies 3 the because nebula, they gave him access so this, to this Jessica up, This was a game Skies changer 3. for me back in 2007. This is Jessica how it looks today, but it didn't really look that different uh, in 2007. So th this is, yeah, this, this, this is how I made the next trailer that I would like to show you, which is the That's true. Trinity expansion trailer, which is also very, very <laughs> dear to me. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, the, the Trinity expansion was, was a big one. It was a, a complete graphical overhaul of, of, of everything. A new, a new, new 3D engine, Trinity version 2, I believe. And so it had to be an impressive, epic, grandiose trailer. A year before, I had started um, working with a guy, a musician, called Adam Skorupa, a Polish musician based in Warsaw. He had composed a track for Revelations, Revelations 1 trailer. Uh, so we asked him again for help with the Trinity expansion uh, and with just a short brief of please make it good, he created a fantastic track, fantastic track that really, really kind of fit the, the visuals and the mood of the expansion. So let's, yeah, uh, that's it. Let's just, let's just play Trinity. <laughs> This, the Trinity expansion was known for its new, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, boot.ini boot is not a very important file. I still get a little tear in my eye whenever I hear, hear that track, it's very, very nice. Uh, okay, so moving on, two years now. So what he's alluding to is that uh, when the Trinity engine, uh, when the Trinity update happened, they replaced the entire original engine with a new engine, right? And for some reason, 
they decided to name the bootstrapper for their engine boot.ini, right? And so there was a folder for the with and in it there was boot.ini as part of the larger package for Eve. Part two of that is that CCP's programming, especially the program that updated it from not, uh, you know pre-Trinity to Trinity, used relative positioning for its uh, file location. So like, for instance, um, you know, like if I run a program on my computer and I want to reference another program or another file from within it, I don't want to have to make an absolute path where I go like C colon backslash blah, 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 and make sure that they're installed at exactly the right place. No, I use a relative path, which means I designate where it is in relationship to where I am now, right? So they, had, they use relative path positioning to, to find and replace these files. This is all fine until some computers fail to do that, in which case the relative just defaults to C root and it deletes C root boot dot INI and the computer never turns on again. Fast forward two years, it's now 2009 and he's was, he becoming more popular. Um, I need help making trailers. So the team begins to expand. First of all, we get CCP Prawn who joined in 2009 on the left there, yeah, whoopsie. he has he had made a bunch of uh, really cool fan uh, e videos. The most popular of one probably probably being Day of Darkness. So when we offered him a job and he accepted, we were very happy. And on the right there is CCP Hot Pants. He joined in 2011. Uh, he transferred from the art For department. Some people, yeah. Uh, he had been working on the character creator, the new game, character boots, creator, I, uh, the cutting edge one put on. back then. So he brought with him a lot of technical expertise and also experience with character animation. So we definitely uh, made use of, of, of all that knowledge in subsequent trailers. So yeah, we also have a, a fourth member of the team that joined us at the beginning of last year, CCP Imp. He, he also has brought a lot of experience and knowledge, so it's, we're very happy to, to have him with us. So we're a team of four, four now. Just to give you a bit of background on this, <laughs> Image here. Well, what's funny is you wouldn't even was, notice it until you rebooted your at a computer conference in Germany several years ago. And at the end of the conference, right? there was like an, sure. a, an awards show for best game trailer or something, which we entered. I think we entered the Citadel expansion. I'm not sure, but I think it was that one. And we didn't win. We didn't win. But the guy who did win, he asked us to look after his expensive bottle of champagne that he got as an award while he went to the toilet. So uh, we made the most of that opportunity. <laughs> but thinking about it, it, it does look as if we were actually drinking his champagne, but we didn't, we didn't go that far. Oh, big hair. <laughs> Just waved it in the air. Well, Imagining you found out if it was installed correctly, didn't you? OK, so now that we're a team, uh, we, needed, we needed a team name like the other CCP teams have internally. So we are called the Fantod Express. Fantod. What's, what's that? Fantod. It's a state or attack of uneasiness or unreasonableness. In other words, fear. And fear is what drives our team <laughs> forward. The fear of screwing up the next trailer and be, being the laughing stock of the whole world, basically, is what pushes us on to make better content. I think we're beginning to channel this uh, feeling of dread whenever we come into work each day and use it for good. <laughs> so, okay, so what are the goals of an e-trailer? You know, what do, we, what do we do these things? What are we trying to achieve here? You've got the obvious one, you track the audience to the game, you need to expose the game to, to potential customers and keep the existing ones happy. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, yeah, create a positive emotional response. So we have the power of uh, you know, storytelling and strong visuals. You know, music is definitely critical, uh, strong sound design. That's all got to come together with precise timing to uh, leave the viewer on an emotional high, ideally, wanting more, which is when we slap the uh, URL on and tell them where to go next. 
We also, uh, yeah, we also want to make the audience feel, feel what it's like to play the game. So emphasis on the word feel and not necessarily show, because sometimes you know, there are a lot of emotions that players experience when they're, when they're playing the game, but it's not always uh, easily, easy to convey that if you're just using in-game footage, you know, zoomed out, icons on the screen. It's, it's hard to you know, convey that feeling of excitement and, and terror when you're in a PvP encounter or you know, the wonder of, of exploration and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so we, we make different kinds of trailer, which I'll just outline now. It's in very broad strokes. There's a lot of crossover, but um, in broad strokes, it's the law ones, which the, yesterday's Kaldari trailer was an example of. Uh, and last year's Minmatar trailer is sort of same similar thing. <clears throat> Other examples are the Origins trailer. Going back a lot further than that is the uh, coronation of Empress Jamil, and these are just about world building, you know, adding immersion and deepening the connection between the player and New Eden, the world that they're playing in. So we're not too concerned about, you know, showing genuine flight mechanics. You know, I think barrel rolls <laughs> we can get away with now and then, because it's just about storytelling. Uh, the gameplay one, of course, the gameplay footage is, of course, critical. We, uh, that's, we have to show an authentic version of the game and, and show people what to expect when they, when they log in. So we did do one back in 2018, which is very long. Um, yeah, it's very popular as well. I think it's been watched 70 million times. Uh, I have to yeah, point, point out that it's also... Uh, it's, it's, become, it's become a lot easier making gameplay trailers with the addition of 3D mouse support, which we added a few years back, which is this uh, device that lets you rotate the camera in-game very smoothly. Um, and it gives you uh, the options of very nice, smooth uh, camera pans and majestic shots that uh, are very useful for making gameplay trailers. <clears throat> a good example of a good example of good 3D mouse usage is is Katia Sai's uh, recent YouTube series of, of videos, which you should definitely check out. They're, they're called, I think they're called New Eden, New Eden Travelers or something. Yep. He, uh, Katia Sai. That's it. That's it. Yep. Yep. She, uh, it's good. a great combination of, of lore and majestic camera moves packaged with fantastic music. And you you know, should check I, it I make out. some I pretty OK movies that. about lore. Uh, so, yeah, and then you've got the Gameplay++, Plus Plus, which I refer to, which is like an idealized version of, of gameplay footage. Uh, like the, like the uh, Trinity trailer that you saw a few minutes ago, and if you, any, of you, you, if any of you have seen the Phoenix trailer, that's an example of uh, Gameplay++, Plus Plus, where we render the shots from, from, Jessi from Jessica um, instead of relying solely on in-game gameplay capture. So regarding this gameplay plus plus uh, technique, the next video. Oh seven, thank is, you for that. Till dawn. Process by which we, by which we do that. It's uh, instead of recording and keyframing animations directly inside Jessica, we we start off uh, using Maya. Uh, Autodesk Maya, like a standard 3D you know, software package, industry standard. So we, we start off in Maya, block out shots, iterate on the animations, fine-tune fine shots and add more assets. And once we're happy with everything, we export all that animation data to Jessica, apply that data to assets in that software where we can render out shots and iterate further in Jessica by adding explosions and other effects, turret fire. So let me just play this video. This is <clears throat> starting off very basic in Maya, iterating on the movement of stuff, adding more ships. This is from the Kaldari trailer yesterday, one of the shots, adding camera shake, just adding more detail. Then that gets exported to assets in in Jessica, and you just, we continue iterating until we find, you know, end up with a final shot. And then it gets graded, you know, a little bit, and here we are. Ah, now, okay, yeah. With so, 
with all that in mind, let's fast forward to 2014. So we were asked to make a trailer that encompasses everything Eve, Eve has to offer, this but from the point of view of a player. Uh, so we thought, well, how are we going to do that? That's no easy task. So of course, the first step was to get as much voice comms from you guys for us to work with. And so we ended up eventually with, this is Eve, which is probably, <laughs> yeah. Now, I am in I'm contention a for man. best trailer. But I'm going to go out sure. on a limb and say that This Is Eve is arguably the best video game trailer ever made. I mean, it is. It's definitely in contention. Yeah, because it demonstrates why we play video games in the first place. There's so much emotion going on, whether you're playing solo or, you know, with your mates, you know, and try, you know, trying to sort of make a video, this is really, this is pretty good. all that into a two, three minute video was, was, uh, was a challenge, but I think we ended up doing a pretty good job. Uh, so, what, yeah, so this next slide here is the process it is like we were, is, is a shot from a photo from the production of, of This Is Eve. We give, it, we give each project uh, an internal name. This one was called Fuzzy Knuckles for some reason. I have no idea why. Uh, and we came up with a, our own project management system where we, we could, at a glance, see how complete the trailer was by marking off uh, crosses on a grid. So the columns are stages of completion of each shot from block out, animatic, render, and done. And the, the rows being the shots Johnny themselves. Pugh. Please come back. But if you remember if you, from a few minutes ago, I was talking about you know this fear of us screwing up. Well, what we also do is plot our levels of fear. Dominic, Dominic, Dominic. Project. That's right. <laughs> I've had so many new players go. Oh, that's a Dominic. Yeah. So uh, you'll see around around about the uh, the end of October, around the middle of the project, we had a massive. I do have a shirt that says spike. "How I Work" to something. And that was down to the music. We had a lot of trouble finding a track that worked with all the, co the voice comms that we got, which were plenty. There was so much, and it was all good. And uh, there were so many different emotions going on. We had real trouble uh, you know, finding a genre of music. We were mixing, we were mixing genres, and um, what were we doing? We were mixing genres, yeah, wingspan, making our own music. We asked CCP Real X to create some tracks. That didn't work. But then we stumbled across a track from the Man of Steel uh, movie. I can't remember what, it, what it's called. And it, everything just clicked. It was, just, it was amazing. It was like a light switch. We put, we put it into the timeline, and it, and it felt amazing. Machios, so you had Eve, so, so you didn't we, spend we any money on anything else. We sent that reference to Adam, the, the musician, Adam Skorupa. And he said, yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah. Just give me a few weeks. I'll, 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 I'll just do the same, but different. It'll be good. <laughs> so after three weeks of not a peep from him, he, he got back in touch, really excited. And <laughs> we put it on the timeline, and we, we had a panic attack. Because it, didn't, up. it wasn't close enough to the reference. And it's such a delicate thing with music. If, if it's just a bit off, everything, could fall, everything did fall apart. Is it tightness So I have a clip here of, yeah, actually have, I have some footage of up in a, or a portion of this trailer chance. with that music, just so you can see how, right how it just a slight deviation from, from what we wanted can you know, lead to a completely different feeling and, and vibe in the trailer. So ho hopefully this will, this will play. This is, like a, this is like a work in progress. Uh, this is Eve version. Uh, so uh, the Prince of Venal, the content size whole is the fact that the story arcs are, go are going to be introducing okay, the content, do, guys, we're right? Like they, they, they specifically said they didn't tell us the really content. The There's content, spot. they didn't tell us about it. Right, yeah, yeah. Pay stand attention there. to the arc. Okay, stand by. So hey guys, here's the deal. They got their prophecy fleet up, and then Razor also has an oracle fleet. So you know, we should have some interesting stuff about to happen. So it's going to be like this. We're going to portal through. And at the same time, the triage carriers are going to jump. Just the triage carriers this is first. Weird hearing Everyone it. Everyone clear? Let me see. Oh crap! I think 
Will we be able to take on Guardians? Yeah, they got four Guardians. She's different. Right, really but different. right now we're in the currently in the good. current arc. It's actually not that good at all. <laughs> so, um, so we had to get we we got back in touch with him and said, um, Adam, it was what you did was amazing. We 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 we, we really like it, but you have to start again. Sorry, it's it's not <laughs> it's not what we're after. So. Uh, you know, so it's, it's not it's not what any artist wants to hear. You know, having to pretty much copy a track but make it a little bit different. So uh, you know, so it's we, we can call it our own. But uh, he went away again for two weeks, and and what we ended up with was 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 so good. It was fantastic. Um, so as you can see, just a, a week or so later, our phantom levels dropped right down again. It's it, there's a there's a spike for legal. I can't remember what that was, but. Um, but that was resolved quickly too. <laughs> okay, so let's just uh, yeah, let's just watch watch the final version of This Is Eve. Thank you. Okay, what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna sit 10k off a target. We're gonna blap it really quick, and then we're gonna warp to the run spot. Does that make sense? Yeah, outstanding. Hey, stand by. So hey guys, here's the deal. They got their prophecy fleet up, and then Razor also has an Oracle fleet. So we should have some interesting stuff about to happen. So it's going to be like this. We're going to portal through, and at the same time, the triage carriers are going to jump just the triage carriers at first. Everyone clear? Let me see. Oh, crap. Will we have to take on Guardians? Yeah, they got four Guardians. I don't think we should do this. We can do this. Don't worry about that. Now we're gonna fucking play some fun games. My heart's racing. Fun, relax. Always the line. Primary is the Dominix. In five, four, three, two. Decloak, decloak, decloak. Torpedoes on the Dominix. Dominix, Dominix. Orbit on me, Michael. Warp tribes on. We're moving. Secondary Vipers in the Omen. He's in structure. Take him down. Dude, that revelation out now. All units on the ramp. Run out towards that guard. Jump now. All dams on the damnation. All dams on the damnation. Shatter, stay here and tackle prophecies. This is where we fight. All right. So I'm carrying a hundred times more than my ship is worth. There were some pirates chasing me. Um, this one guy chased me through like five different systems. I need to get the fuck out of the system. This little rock right here is worth about 166 million isk. For some people, this might not be a big deal, but for me, it's huge. Seller 4.2, pretty nice. Gonna produce four of them, two days, 19 hours, 11 minutes, 44 seconds. We can expect to make eight to 10 million around there. 51 out of 56 grit. Okay, good. And we've got five modules to fit in here. The ship's speed is actually pretty good. It can hit 4K a second. We're going to hurt that now by adding on some armor buffer. Up, oh, success. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Yay, so much fun. Oh, yeah, such fun. We're almost done now. Like, uh, less than a week. Oh, look. Okay, oh. Whoa! Oh, yeah. I'll give you the silence down, I'll give you the silence down. Go, 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 silence down. Portal, portal, primary. Gate is green, gate is green. Cyber skills to one red, you guys, BSC. And the guys idle, and green, come on. Oh shit, how do I work to something? E-war drone, all E-war drones on Sky. Why are you decloaking? Ah, I'm so happy to suck there. Oh my god, that's a talk about at first just a second about why this trailer was so good up until this point ccp often ran into the problem where either players looked at it and said that it wasn't realistic like for instance with the this is or i was there trailer or it was so obtuse that it 
didn't really it was somewhere between unaccessible to somebody who didn't already play the game or didn't at least it didn't convey why somebody would want to play eve online right so either it failed to cater towards the players or it failed to cater towards uh the general populace uh or both this is eve managed to be you know get, gain its its chops and its accuracy by using actual events and actual not only actual events but the actual you know voice comms from the events Right. So everybody's like, oh, my God, these are actual things that are ha I know that person, you know, whatever. Um, but at the same time, it tells a visceral story that I can show somebody who's never played Eve before. And they'll be like, wow, this is a game of Internet spaceships. And it has some really I don't know. I don't understand what is going on here and why all the ships are exploding. But it's obviously crazy. And they're all losing their minds. Right. Like. It was able to communicate to both populations in a in a way that almost no other trailer ever has. The players are the content creators, but the but, the, but they need catalysts, man. Also, so I several of those things are are players interacting with PVE. Uh, speaking of which, the Chance Ravine one, I mentioned that that's somewhat deceptive. Uh, in the original version with Chance Ravine, he's in an anathema. Uh, and in this version, he's in an Astero. So when he says it's worth three times my ship, that value is actually significantly more in the video than it was in the original like clip that he made the comment in. That gameplay plus plus thing I was talking about is in evidence here. A lot of the material that we got from you um, included video, so we were able to reconstruct the scenes that were actually playing out at the time for added authenticity. Okay, so so there are two main phases of of making an Eve trailer. We've got the pre-production phase, which in the case of the Caldari one that you saw the other day, uh, took an equally amount of t an equally long time as the production phase. We started the Caldari trailer at the beginning of January, and we're wrapping things up just two days ago. So it was a four-month four-month process for, for four people. And yeah, uh, the pre-production phase is actually my, my favorite part of the trailer, because there, there are no mistakes made. Any, anything goes. We talk to the law team, game designers, if there are features that we need to, to highlight in expansion trailers. And, and there are, you know, anything goes. We, we use Adobe Premiere to, to just throw footage, anything, audio, on, onto a timeline in order to, uh, to get some kind of idea for where a trailer, you know, could go. I would have loved to have shown you a, a really rough block out of, of the Caldari trailer, but uh, for legal copyright reasons, streaming, blah, blah, I wasn't allowed to. So you just have to imagine, you know, we were using we're using shots from The Expanse next to, um, you know, shots from the Transformers movie and quite a lot of footage actually from uh, a really cool Chinese military uh, recruitment ad, which <laughs> all sorts of crazy explosions going off. And some Star Wars, you know, dogfights sprinkled on top as well. Um, so, and that edited together is usually enough to convince the stakeholders of giving it a stamp of approval to, to move over to the production phase. Uh, it's surprisingly effective. You know, if we put music down and edit it together with random shots of, you know, anything really, um, th things tend to make sense. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, and from here, the, the process just evolves of, through a, uh, a cycle of iteration. CCP Mirage uh, of of the pul the pulse or the the pulse fame yeah the guy in, at the bar he uh, he's been writing scripts for us these past few years and it's a it's a quite a collaborative process he after much brainstorming he would write something very very good for us to use which then we proceed to just rip to pieces rearrange words in order to fit our edit because the the timing of the shots is very critical and the, the words have to flow with the music. So then he takes that mess and fixes it and the cycle just repeats, repeats until we're all happy with a, with a, a final result. 
And yeah, and, and that's, that's the process. We, uh, we uh, well, I'll talk, about, I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, so just to talk about new technologies that we're, that we're experimenting with, um, we've invested in a motion capture suit CCP Loki, the uh, one-man army behind the scope videos, he he utilizes he uses the mocap suit quite extensively, as you probably realize if you watch the, the, the newer episodes of the, the the scope. There's lots of people moving around, and we've uh, started using this in in more of, of our shots, especially the law-based trailers, where we're allowed to. Um, it's a strange transformation takes place when CCP Loki uh, puts this suit on. He, he develops this kind of alter ego of a superhero persona, and he suddenly wants to help. You see, he's got the sandals of plus one charisma there as well. That helps. <laughs> and he, he just wants to help everyone in the office, as every superhero should. I have an example of that. Here is CCP Oracle. I think on this day, he, uh, he rescued her cat from a tree. She was very happy about that. On another day, he's here with another colleague offering sound financial advice. Thank you, Mr. Mocap Man. And so examples of, of shots and material that, that have utilized this um, motion capture technology include some shots from the Kaldari trailer. This is all CCP Loki running and falling in various ways, and uh, pressing buttons on a, on a uh, console there. His and also Loki just providing falling over his um, house. motion capture data for a lot of the, the people walking around behind, behind the CCP Mirage in the Pulse Bar. And interestingly enough, interestingly enough, this, uh, these are all rendered in, in Unreal. We've, we've started using um, Unreal Engine for uh, a lot of stuff we make. I mean, the, the law-based trailers especially, and also for Pulse. Um, but it would be nice to make more law trailers because world building is very important and you know, immersion is, I'm a big fan of it. So, so we'll see where that goes. And, and I am now on the last slide and have nothing else to say. So that's it. Um, I'll be up in the round one of the roundtable rooms with CCP Mirage, and maybe CCP Imp might turn up at 4 o'clock. So uh, I might see you up there. Otherwise, have a great evening. Was, thanks for coming, and fly safe. Thank you. Is that it for the presentation?